hello from Nuremberg, Germany. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So we are here for a couple of days without much of an itinerary. The plan is just to wander around and see what we find. Yeah, I guess we're going to try to pack in as much as we can in mm -hmm. just two days. And the nice thing is that a lot of the attractions and things to do seem to be concentrated in the center. Yes. So that'll make it really easy. We're just going to be doing a lot of walking and randomly stopping off in different places. All so. right, let's get started. Let's do it. We started our day by taking the U-Bahn to the center of town and getting off at Lorenzkirche. This put us on the south bank of the Pegnitz River, where we took the opportunity to browse some markets before visiting St. Lorenz Church. This is a beautiful Gothic church complete with pointed vaults, stained glass windows and sculptures. They regularly put on concerts where you can listen to classical music played on one of the largest organs in Europe, but we were only there to catch a glimpse of the inside. From there we walked across one of the city's many bridges and continued on to the beautiful fountain. Yes, that's the name, searching for a bit of good luck. So right now we're at Schönerbrunnen and apparently there's a gold ring that we can spin for good luck. And I have walked around this whole tower and I can't find the ring. So we're going around again, looking for it. I go like this? We, we found it, a local had to point it out, but there's the ring, you spin it three times for good luck. Oh my gosh, that was the hardest ring to ever find. It does not like look a needle, gold. Needle in a haystack. Really? <laughs> we walked around in circles for five minutes. Okay, I think you've done it like 10 times. That's plenty of luck. One of Nuremberg's most famed attractions is the Imperial Castle, located in the northwest end of the old town. The castle is a testament to the power of the Holy Roman Empire during the Middle Ages, and it is made up of numerous buildings. Wandering the complex itself is free of charge. We are going up the tower! Up the tower to the top of the castle. It appears that these will definitely be the best views in the entire city. Okay, so you can get three different types of tickets. We paid three euros and 50 cents each, and this gives us access to the tower, which we're going to climb for some views. And later, we're also gonna be visiting this really deep well, and there's gonna be a demonstration. Yeah. But for now, let's start climbing. So what we ended up skipping was the museum, right? The museum. Sam is not a fan of museums. Well, I didn't exactly see, see you super keen to go either. <laughs> So I'd say those views were worth it. Views were amazing. It wasn't so bad of a climb, actually. Like, it's no, not that tiring. It's not tiring, and also the, the steps seem quite modern. They're nice and wide. Mm -hmm. Like, normally when we climb, climb up a tower, it's like these, it's dark, and the steps are, like, tiny. But yeah, no, was, but it was cool. And you get 360-degree views once you reach the top. So yeah. you get to see all the rooftops and the little cobble streets. So yeah, it was good. Indeed. And next up, we're going to be uh, viewing a demonstration. What's that all about? So we're going to see a well, a water well. Apparently it's really deep and they light some candles and send them down. So yeah, that's next. Let's go check that out. One of the most important buildings within the castle complex is the well house, which dates back to 1563 and houses the deep well. The well is 50 meters deep and to show how deep that really is, they put on an impressive demonstration. Wait for it. So we are now having a wander through the castle gardens. Sam, oh King Sam, come tell us about your gardens. My gardens are majestic <laughs> and only I may enter. Oh. Actually one of the coolest things is that this place hasn't been overcrowded, especially this garden section. There have actually been certain areas where we've been the only people. So it's been Yeah, really cool. and we didn't have to pay to get in, it's free. And it's a weekday, it's a Wednesday, so yeah. come on a weekday. And we couldn't come all the way to Nuremberg and not try the famed Nuremberger sausage. We went to Bratwurst Häusle, right in the heart of the old town by St. Sebaldus Church. And this is what it looks like. The food is already here and it's yeah. cooked right in the middle of the restaurant. It's an open kitchen so yeah, you can so watch cool. them prepare it. We got to watch them do that. Yeah. And it is six. Six, six to a plate. But you know what? It usually comes, it can come in six, eight, ten or twelve and you can get three different side dishes with it. We ordered 
sauerkraut. Yeah. And then That's we also the ordered an extra side of potato salad because we couldn't make up our mind. They both sounded so, it's so just good. Over here. Yeah. And you can also just get it with horseradish. So we've come a long way for this very special sausage. So yeah. What makes it so unique? Well, what makes it so unique is that it's basically its configurations. It has to be oh, between configurations. This is seven, so mathematical. Seven, <laughs> seven to nine centimeters. Yeah. And uh, weighs between twenty to twenty-five grams. Yeah. So uh, these you are cannot small. You cannot deviate from that. Oh no. No. Because then it's not authentic. Exactly. Okay. And apparently it's also seasoned with marjoram, which isn't a spice I'm really familiar with. I'm not quite sure what it tastes like. Time for that very first bite. Yeah, in he goes. The famed Nuremberg sausage. Will it disappoint? Wow. No? No. No. <laughs> it's good. That, that's one of the best sausages I've ever had. Like, that is just so good. We had to get dessert after we saw it on the menu. <laughs> If you'd like to hear some more horrible German, we got Apfelstrudel mit Vanille Sauce und Sahne. I believe that's apple strudel <laughs> with vanilla sauce and cream. So yeah. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we be. Looks nice. Look at that. So we've got some icing sugar on top, it would seem. Ooh, the sauce is warm. I can feel the heat rising off the plate. Let's see. Let's try that. <gasps> The icing sugar blew away. <laughs> and? Mm. Mm -hmm. This is what? That's quite good. Later that afternoon, we went into Nuremberg's deep underground on a tour of the historic beer cellars. Nuremberg has been a beer brewing city for centuries, and sometime around the year 1380, a building law was passed stating that everyone who was brewing beer in their house had to have a cellar 10 feet deep and 16 feet wide. This is not meant for tall people. I'm okay. Sam, not so much. <laughs> Mr. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, exactly. The Hunchback of Nuremberg. So, finishing the tour with some red beer. That looks quite frothy. Yeah, that's nice. It's going down well this time of day. What time is it? <laughs> 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Yeah. Ready for beer. <laughs> While in town, we also took a walk down Weissgerber Gasse, which may just be one of the prettiest streets in Nuremberg. The street's name translates to White Tanner's Lane, since this was home to the workshops of craftsmen specializing in leather goods. So we are currently doing an audio tour of Albrecht Dürer's home. He was a German painter. I got my audio set. Sam declined, so let's go in. Albrecht Dürer's one-time home is now a museum dedicated to his life and work. He was a German Renaissance artist across many mediums, but he is best known for revolutionizing printmaking and elevating it as an art form. At certain times of day, they offer a guided tour with an actress who plays the role of Agnes Dürer, the artist's wife. We have found a Canada goose. That goose is Canadian 100%. Goose, come say hello. Come say a. Hey. So here's a fun challenge if you're traveling in Nuremberg. Try and see how many beautiful bridges you can find because we've crossed a lot today. Yeah, and I keep asking you, Audrey, is this, is this it? Is this the special bridge? The bridge is, this the, is this the bridge, bridge that we've been looking for? And there's just been so many amazing ones and apparently not. So we're still, no. we're still on the hunt for it. The bridge we were looking for is the Heile Geispital, or the Holy Spirit Hospital. It's not a bridge in the usual sense of the word, rather a medieval building that sits across part of the Pegnitz River. On a more serious note, we couldn't leave Nuremberg without also visiting the Dokuzentrum, also known as the Documentation Center Nazi Party Rallying Grounds. Today the unfinished Congress Hall, which was meant to hold 50,000 people, houses a museum with a permanent exhibition titled Fascination and Terror. The museum looks at the rise of National Socialism, the mass events used for Nazi propaganda, and the aftermath we are all too familiar with. You can reach the museum by taking tram number 9 to the Dokuzentrum from the Hauptbahnhof. 
And that's a wrap for our guide to Nuremberg, Germany. As you can see, it would be easy to cover most of the main sites on a day trip, though you may want to give yourself two days to scratch a bit beyond the surface. If you have any other suggestions of cool things to do in Nuremberg, feel free to share those with fellow travelers in the comments below. In the meantime, wishing you happy travels and see you next time.